Hey everybody, today we're going to take a deeper look into the well-known story of Paul Bunyan. Before I ever had a geography class, I was taught a different story about how the mountains and valleys came to be, and that tall tale was Paul Bunyan. Paul Bunyan is a story about a huge giant that is responsible for the creation of many natural landforms. Is it possible that this could be a reference to how many of these odd-shaped mountains were formed? Maybe they're from a much more recent time than history even suggests. In the story, Paul was born to average-sized parents. He was quite large at birth and grew rapidly. He was nearly 100 pounds before he was a month old. Paul was said to be so large that he would roll over in his sleep and cause earthquakes, so much so that the local government actually had to intervene and kick the family out of town. He was described as being extremely strong as well as extremely fast. He was said to be the best lumberjack, and he had a crew of men all over 6 foot 5 and each over 350 pounds, which were all well known in the area. In the tale, these lumberjacks ate sourdough pancakes and had to fight off giant mosquitoes and allegedly had a dog that could be cut into pieces and then put back together. In Norse mythology, we have a very similar story of Ymir, a giant whose remains were said to have created the land. This giant survived off of the milk of a giant bovine animal, and in the poetic Edda, it's clear that Ymir lived in a world that was not physical, and only became physical once he died. While I think there's some very fantastical elements to these stories, it's likely a mixture of truth and fiction. I do suspect that there were very large people not so long ago. Perhaps there was a man who cut down a bunch of trees, but I think it's more likely that this story is a symbol. However, I don't think it's necessarily a symbol for the giants of industry as we understand the phrase today. Could the massive amount of downed trees be the result of some sort of cataclysmic event? There were lots of stories that involved giants at this time from various regions. Were they real people or metaphors for natural disasters? Whatever they were, could they have been responsible for changing the landscapes like the stories say they do? This train of thought reminded me of Ireland's lack of trees, something that is officially attributed to overlogging. That's something we go into more in our ancient deforestation video, but it definitely rang a bell. Many folktales seem to be referencing astrological or weather occurrences. For instance, this dog that comes apart and goes back together could be what is known as a sun dog. Could this represent the Osiris myth? In the myth of Osiris, he's cut up and separated and then eventually regains his full form. Babe the blue ox could also be representative of winter, as the ox is a second in the Chinese zodiac and the season it represents is winter. In fact, the year 2021 is also the year of the ox, the metal ox to be oddly specific. Babe the blue ox was said to have died of overeating and was buried in the Black Hills, the same area where Mount Rushmore and the Devil's Tower reside. Both very, very curious locations, but I'll get to that in a bit. According to the story, Paul finds the blue ox during the blue winter. And this is another strange component of the story this blue winter legend where it was so cold that many froze within minutes of being outside. These kind of events aren't unheard of, winters so cold that they're talked about for decades in the future due to their severity. There are also many references to sun dogs during this period of time, a phenomenon where there is an extra fake sun. It's a time where some major event happened and this translated into some sort of legend. So let's take a look at this industrial revolution. Let's break down the word industry. tree. This was the time where we have many stories of gold miners and cowboys in the wild, wild west. And all the artworks I see of this time period take place in these wastelands, a land full of sandy mesas and mountains. And if you watched our video on giant trees, then you're probably already thinking what I'm going to say. If these mesas are indeed stumps of fallen trees, then there would likely be some dust and chunks of debris left behind just as plentiful and massive as the trees they came from. This brings me to mountains that aren't mesas. There are many different kinds of mountains of all different shapes and sizes, so it's unlikely that the exact same process created them all. Mesas are the base of these massive ancient trees, then it would make sense that some of the surrounding landforms could be leftovers of the debris or even the remains of the ancient structures that were of the old world. So let's take a look at some. Some mountains remind me of like a swept up dust pile or the sand underneath the ocean shaped by ocean currents. And then there are some mountains that are more short or bulbous. There are others that are jagged and tall. And honestly, the list of shapes and sizes goes on and on. 
and the chemical makeup of these mountains all vary. How each of these are formed, I cannot say for sure, but I don't think it was just one single event or set of circumstances as, you know, the mountains are probably all different ages. Um, we know about the mud flood, the water flood, the dark winter, plasma beams, the frozen, the petrified, the melted. There's a lot of argument um, on which one is the culprit for our current geography, but I think that it's probably some kind of mixture. Um, always open to new information, of course. Um, but in the story of Paul Bunyan, it's said that he actually created the Grand Canyon by dragging his mighty axe. It's also said that he created the Grand Teton Mountains and the Thousand Lakes area with his footprints. And while I admit that some of these pictures are reminiscent of footprints, I still feel like Paul Bunyan could be a metaphor for some cataclysmic world-altering celestial event. I've mentioned this before, but the Grand Canyon is identical to the Lichtenberg pattern that appears when lightning strikes. And, uh, you know, that could indicate some kind of plasma um, event, but I can't say for certain. But all I really can say is that the world we know is a world of ruins and ashes, and what we know as natural landforms are not merely a series of moving plates underneath the crust of the earth. Um, I think erosion is just a small part of shaping and creating these landforms. When we look at Horseshoe Bend, we can see that it has very little to do with um, tectonic plates or water erosion. The official story is that it was carved out over millions and millions of years by water, but when you actually go to these places and you see the landforms with your own eyes, there's just a lot of really good questions that come up. It's more difficult to accept the official story because we can see with our own eyes right angles, striations that resemble marks made by machinery, rocks shaped like animals, or other familiar objects. I know that the acceptable thing to say is, wow, these were formed by random, just like our universe. Isn't it so existentially beautiful? But at some point, the coincidences start to look like a different picture than the one we're presented in the academic entertainment industry. I'm not saying I know what's going on completely, and I know that some folks listening to this train of thought think it's just ridiculous or it's a joke, and that's fair. I can understand that. I'm not saying, hey, erosion isn't real, it's all fake. I'm just saying uh, I think that some of these things are just a little too uncanny for me to believe that it's just some moving plates and some wind and water. Anyway, thank you guys so much for listening. I want to try to do this like more frequently. Um, there's just a lot of stuff going on. But I also wanted to mention real quick the uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 game. That was really interesting that it took place in like this cold winter. And this whole like cowboy wild wild west thing is really interesting. Um, I think it's a weird time. Like post destruction. And I'm really interested in looking more into that. So if anybody has any interesting stuff on that, please feel free to let me know. Uh, thanks again. And may our minds be unveiled. Let go of everything you think to be true. Relax the mind and ask the question, do I truly understand what this reality is?